my tropical vivarium has been growing and changing constantly. From new life being born to new plant growth, but not all is good. The summer has brought many problems with its extreme heat. In this video, I update you all on all the changes that have happened. Join us on this journey to witness the resilience of life. In the last video, I added these two beautiful morning geckos, which have been living here for a few months now. And we also discovered they had laid a clutch of eggs. One night, a few weeks later, while keeping an eye on the mini rainforest, a tiny movement caught my attention. And upon inspecting closely, I realized it was a baby gecko. This newborn gecko, fragile yet full of promise, marks a moment of triumph to the vivarium. As the days went by, more gecko hatchlings made their appearance. Their delicate feet and curious eyes observed their newfound world. It was a journey of growth and adaptation, where they would need to learn to navigate their lush surroundings and find food. But not all was rainbows and butterflies. Life in this vivarium had its drama, even within their own species. Morning geckos are cannibals to small geckos, and pose a real threat to vulnerable baby geckos. And some of the tails of the baby geckos were gone. In response to this, the baby geckos found refuge in lower parts of the vivarium. These secluded spots provided a safe place for them to live as their tails regrew. It was a remarkable display of natural defense mechanism, evolved to increase their odds of survival in a challenging environment. Sometimes the baby geckos would venture to the bottom of the vivarium, home of the deadly poison dart frogs. Dart frogs have excellent senses and will detect any movement, and they will eat almost anything they can fit into their mouth. But luckily for the geckos, they were big enough to not have to worry about the dart frogs, and the dart frogs let them be. Life in the wild is very hard for these geckos. The reason for laying so many eggs is because most of them will not survive. Unlike the dart fox, whose deadly potent poison protects them, the geckos don't have any main defense and almost anything big enough to eat them will eat them. But here in the vivarium, they only had to worry about the two adult geckos, which might try and go after them if they're very hungry. Yet the geckos, Unaware of this relative safety, stick to their natural instincts of continuous caution. That is why they spend most of their time hiding, and come out especially at night where predators will have a harder time seeing them. On the other hand, the frogs roam all around the vivarium, exploring and searching for food all day, with no fear at all. They know no predators will go after them thanks to their deadly toxin. The bright blue colors are warning to predators that his skin secretes a deadly toxin. From the very beginning, baby geckos already know they need to hunt to be able to survive. Unlike many animals, they don't rely on their parents to help them at all from the first moments of their life. As soon as they see a potential meal, their survival instincts kick in and their eyes lock onto the prey. The fruit fly is oblivious to the danger closing in, a moment of vulnerability that strikes opportunity for the young hunter. With a sudden burst of speed, one of the baby geckos lunges forward, jaw snapping shot around the unsuspecting fly. Success. The lightning fast strikes leave the fruit fly with no chance of escape. The perfect coordination between the gecko's keen eyesight and jaws ensures a successful catch. The fly is quickly subdued, becoming a vital source of sustenance for the young reptile. Even being naturally talented at hunting, sometimes you're just not sure how to get the fly. Should I strike now? 
Should I be more patient? Ooh, just missed. They still have some improvement to do and learn the best strategy to hunt. Luckily, the fly is not panicking. Closer and closer. Will he finally get him now? Finally. And after all of that, now that he's done hunting, it looks like the food is now coming to him. Among the baby geckos, there's a particularly older one. A standout. A gecko named Slick. A real pro at the hunting game. Slick found the perfect strategy to catch its prey. It had observed the behavior of the flies over time and knew the perfect spot to be. Slick climbed up her bromeliad and waited for any fly to walk by. As soon as they were close, he struck as fast as lightning, his sticky tongue lashing out and snaring the unsuspecting fly. Hunting among the branches comes easily to these miniature reptiles. Each the size of your finger, they'll eat pretty much anything they can grab. Despite the challenges they faced, the baby geckos thrived, growing stronger and more skilled with each passing day. All was going well in the micro rainforest, until the temperatures started rising. It was that time of the year. The summers where I live can get very hot, and even though the vivarium was inside, it was not enough. A lot of the moss started drying up and dying, and the big leaves of the beautiful dragon skill died. Many plants, unfortunately, couldn't withstand the prolonged exposure to the intense heat. Their once vibrant foliage turned brown and brittle, their survival challenged by the punishing sun and the heat. The vivarium struggled through the heat like me. Plants play a crucial role beyond their aesthetic appeal. They give safety, providing hiding spots and nooks where the geckos could seek refuge and find solace. The carefully selected greenery also acts as the vivarium's air purifiers, ensuring a clean and healthy environment for the inhabitants. But with the rising temperatures, these essential plants were starting to wilt and show signs of distress. Finally, after a long summer, the heat gradually decreased and the vivarium was starting to show signs of growth again. Like me, all animals managed to survive. Plants started to grow and new moss started to turn the vivarium green again. The fall in the jungle was here. In the Amazon jungle, the inspiration for this vivarium, the seasons of the weather consist of the dry season and the rainy season. And I try to replicate these seasons here in the vivarium as best as I can. Until now, we have been in the dry season, where the rains don't happen as often. But now in October, it was time for a change. Storms were approaching and the rains were about to get serious. The gecko sought refuge in the foliage, as rumbling of thunder grew louder. The rainy season was here. Rain is the lifeblood of the jungle. Every drop can have a huge impact on tiny lives. After the storm had passed, the calm had returned, and the scent of damp earth and humidity filled the air. 
transporting visitors to the heart of the Amazon, even within the confines of the Liberium. The gecko's skin is waterproof, so you can clearly see the droplets left by the rain on his skin, glittering like diamonds. This simulation of the changing seasons wasn't just for show, it was to simulate the real Amazon and to make the vivarium feel like it's a chunk of it taken from there. As my channel grows, it will allow me to keep improving into bigger and better projects. Late in the day, you could feel a nice breeze bringing some ventilation to the vivarium and keeping the glass clear from condensation. It was starting to get late and the light was starting to change. It was getting darker and warmer colors appeared. It was the golden hour in the vivarium and with the sun setting, the night was approaching. As the vivarium turned to the deep blue light of the evening night, it was showtime for the morning geckos. As the darkness of the night arrived, the morning geckos emerged cautiously from their hiding spots, sensing the arrival of their time to thrive in the dimly lit world. They communicated with subtle chirps. This was their time to hunt, explore, and socialize. As they explored the various nooks and crannies, one of them found something. A bowl filled with delicious mango and banana. You'd think these dinosaur-looking predators would only be carnivorous, but they're actually omnivores, eating fruits too. And soon, others started finding it too. It looked like she wasn't too sure if she wanted to share. But in the end, she decided to. Fruits are important to a gecko's diet as they provide with the nutrients they need. At night, when the forest is at its darkest, their eyes adapt. Check out how much their eyes can open up to allow as much light as possible. They have excellent eyesight which allows them to see even in incredibly dark places. The gecko's nocturnal adventures continued until the first light of dawn. As the day approached, they retreated to their hiding spots once again. The vivarium transformed once more as the morning sun cast its golden rays, and a new day began. The dark frogs woke from their rest, ready to embrace the day, and the vivarium came alive full of color, a dance of life that repeated itself day and night in this miniature world. As time passed, the leaves decomposed and got eaten by the microfauna and bacteria. It was time for a new forest floor with new leaves, which the frogs happily welcomed as they would have different textures and scents to explore. I grabbed a few leaves and like in the wild, replicated them falling from a tree to the floor, giving a realistic look. The frogs with their beautiful vibrant color stood out against the new backdrop. And with so many leaves on the forest floor, something needed to help break down decaying matter. This is an isopod, and they are the perfect animal for this. They eat dead leaves and plants, keeping the soil healthy. Their orange hue added another splash of color to the vibe blending in with the earthy tones of the leaves and branches. Puddles form in pockets of the landscape, mimicking the natural water reservoirs. And as the days go by, with all this water, the vivarium continues to evolve. The plants change and grow, providing shelter and sustenance to the animals. Life thrives within these simulated confines showcasing the intricacies of the rainforest. It's a reminder that even within a glass box, nature has a way of finding its own path, adapting and flourishing in its unique and awe-inspiring way.